Good morning to you. Edward, how are you? Fine. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay. So, for the past months, we've been talking about normal anatomy and then normal sonographic anatomy or setting up the cervical organs. How we can appreciate them on the sonogram as well. And then we talk about some basic pathologies associated with these organs. So, today being with you guys, um, we will discuss ultrasound reporting, trends in some ultrasound reporting pathologies, and then evaluation. Okay? Now, the last time we talked about some congenital abnormalities of these organs. What do I mean when, I, when I'm saying, or when I talk, we talk about congenital malformations? The patient or the baby was born with it, life. Okay? So, for example, we know that the kidneys are located in the flanks. Okay? For some individuals, their kidneys may not be located in their normal anatomical position. So, for some individuals, their kidneys may be located in the perfect cavity. In that case, we call it an ectopic kidney or renal ectopia. For some individuals, the one side of the kidney, especially the left side, may relocate or move cross from the inside side and then fuse with the parenchyma of the right kidney. Okay? And then for that matter, we call it cross fused ectopia. It has crossed from its original position and then fused with the parenchyma of the other one. We talk about what is parenchyma. You see sonographers writing homogeneous parenchyma, homogeneous this. Okay? Parenchyma simply, simply talks about the tissue makeup, the tissue makeup of that organ. Okay? So, when I have um, ectopic kidneys, as I said, cross fused ectopia, we have, we have, we have cause two kidneys. Okay? And then we have situs inverse to, to talis. For example, we know that the spleen and then the heart is more or less located on the left side. Okay? But for some individuals, they make the relocation where the organs that are within the right side are being what? Positioned within the left side. Okay, so situs inversus totalis is also there. Okay, so the patient was born with this. Those are congenital abnormalities. Okay, and then some other abnormalities as a whole. We also talk about inflammatory diseases. Diseases affecting these organs as a result of inflammation. And as a sonographer, it is your responsibility to know certain cardinal signs that the patient will present in your facility. Okay, now we have five cardinal signs of inflammation for which sonographers are supposed to know. And then the patient will come to you, Dr. Edward, I'm experiencing right upper quadrant pain. Okay, so one sign of inflammation is pain. So before the clinical history, before you have been able to ascertain or the clinical history of the patient, you should be able to identify the kind of pathology you are supposed to you expect to see. Okay, so one sign is what? Pain, dolor, And then heat. Okay, in sonogram or in ultrasound, we talk about a rise in temperature. So the patient comes to you, right upper quadrant pain. So first sign, right upper quadrant pain. And then rise in temperature, heat fever. Okay. That gives you a view that one, it is you are likely to see what you are likely to see on the sonogram is likely from inflammatory origin. Right breast pain, mastitis. So inflammation of the breast tissues. Okay, the patient will come with pain. And then there is also swelling. For example, you've been taking a lot of alcohol. Okay, alcohol, chronic alcohol abuse. And then it may cause injury to the liver. Okay, so the tissue began what swelling up with what fluid. And at a, at a, at a certain point, because there is edema, the size of the organ what increase. Okay, so we realize in most acute states of inflammation, organ size increases. So acute hepatitis, inflammation of the liver, the size of the organ increases. Inflammation of the pancreas is what? What is that? Pancreatitis. Okay. So when there is inflammation of the liver, that is pancreatitis, the size of the organ of what? Increases. Okay. So in acute cases, you realize the size of the organ of what? Increases because there is but our fluid and there is edema. The organ has become edema. Okay, and then one also sign is redness. So when it comes to the breast like this, 
the patient comes to you with all these signs and then you see that there is redness on the part of the breast. Okay, so you scan them and you realize that there are certain changes within the fibroglandular tissues. Okay, it's telling that this is an inflammatory process that is what's going on. Okay, now, you scan and then you realize the pancreas is also enlarged. Acute phase, swollen, tissue build up is what's going on. The size increases. So as a sonographer, you begin to compare. Is, this, is it normal or abnormal? You measure it is greater than 3 millimeters for the head, for the pancreas. It is greater than 2.5 centimeters for the body. And then the tail is also greater than 2.5. That is the dimension that we are supposed to know. Okay. Because there is an increase in size, you become like, what is that? Okay. Then, let's go and do laboratory investigations. And then you realize the normal value that is expected also what increases or increases beyond the normal limit, telling you that there's what loss of function of that organ. And then if you the organ is not functioning effectively, there's what a change in variations, a change in the normal measurement that is we are supposed to know, a change in the normal value. Okay, so inflammatory diseases, the signs and clinical symptoms, they are very, very important as to know that we are supposed to know. Okay, so pain, heat, swelling, redness, and then loss of what? Function. Now, we also have masses. So you see sonographers, hepatic mass, this mass, splenic mass. What are the sonographers trying to see? Masses are space occupying lesions. For example, something like this. This is the liver. Okay. The left loop and then the right loop, and then there is let's say something here. This is a mass, okay. So you saw it, and then you are classifying this as a mass, right? Why mass? Because it is occupying a space inside a particular organ, in this case, the liver. Because it is occupying a space inside of the organ, we call it a space occupying lesions. And then the role of ultrasound is to identify. If the lesion is a cystic lesion or what? A solid lesion. Please, are you okay? So, space of five lesions could be a cystic mass or a solid what? Mass. Now, if it is a solid, a cystic mass, we have it into two a simple cystic lesion, benign cystic lesion, and then a complex cystic mass. What are the sonographic features of a simple cystic lesion? Total black, right? So what? It is what? An equation. The second one is Thin walls, okay? Look at the walls, very thin. Thin walls. Three, posterior enhancement. Brighter reflection from the posterior wall, okay? And then, we may have, if there should be a septation, it should be only one or two thin, not thick. Thin septations. Okay. So a simple cyst classification. And a quick thin walls, the walls should not be thick. And then there should be posterior enhancement. And then thin septation, one or two thin septations may be accepted as well. A simple cyst classification. Now, when it is complex, what do I mean? We have echoes within the cyst, a cystic lesion that is infected, and then we have internal echoes within. Okay. Now we can classify the complex according to the tissue makeup. What is what it entails within the lesion, the cyst? Do we have more cyst than solid components, or do we have more solid components within the cyst than the, than the cystic uh, component itself? Okay, so then this leads us what? When we have more cystic than more solid parts within the cyst, then we classify that as what predominantly cystic. Though they are all complex, 
basis. Okay. And then predominantly solid. When we have more solid within the cystic component than the cystic part. When you get something complex, because it is complex, it becomes suspicious. What are we talking about? What, what are we thinking? What are the differential diagnoses? Depending on the organ it finds itself in. If it is within the cyst, the liver, simple hepatic cyst. Okay. If it is within the kidney, renal cyst. Okay, a bit that one will talk detail to that. But when it is complex, we have differential diagnosis. It could be an abscess. It could be hemorrhagic or hematoma. Okay, abscess, hemorrhagic or what? Hematoma. How do you know if the lesion is an abscess, hemorrhagic or what? Hematoma. So anytime you are dealing with a patient, the clinical history is very important. You should be able to interact well with the patient to know what exactly is happening to the patient, how the whole, how the disease or the process came about. Okay. Now, when the patient comes to you and then complain about fever, right and heart pain, then more or less you may consider an abscess collection. Okay. Then, if the patient comes to you with history of trauma or injury, either direct or indirect, then you may consider what hemorrhagic or hematoma. Are you okay up to this point? Okay. We also have solid component. If it is not cyst, growth of sonography, it is solid. Now, if it is solid, it could be a benign solid lesion or malignant lesion. What are the sonographic features of the solid masses? We've done all these things. Past this. Solid masses, hypoequic or hyperequic. Okay, solid mass, it could be hypoequic or hyperequic. And then we have attenuation. So, assuming this is a solid tumor within, let's say, the uterus, hyperequic. We have attenuation. What is attenuation? The decrease in intensity of sound wave as it passes through tissues. So we have shadowing, okay, and then we have lateral shadowing emanating from the posterior side, from the lateral side of the lesion. So we have lateral shadowing like this. Okay, and then rounding of the inferior edge. Here's the inferior edge. So rounding of the inferior edge of the liver, of the lesion, or the of the mass. And then we also have at times it may compress a vessel and then cause the fusion of that vessel. So assuming we have a strain vessel like this, and then this mass is compressing it, the shape of that vessel what increase. The shape of that vessel will increase or change, sorry. The shape of that vessel will change. There's no transition, there's acceleration. Okay, what structures? What structures are here? I go hyper equip or not? Transfer? You, what, what are the structures? What is that? What is that for them? Hyper equip. We have bones, so we have metals. Okay, and then these are benign tumors within organs or tissues. So, for example, fibroid like this or minor or appear what? Hyper equip, lateral shadowing. Okay, and then we have malignant lesions. If the lesion is malignant, it could be a cystic mass or what? A solid mass. Depending on the sonographic criteria, it could be a cystic mass or solid mass. Then we will talk about the shape and then the size when we are describing those pathologies. Okay. We also have autoimmune disorders. Sorry, diseases that are from unknown origin. We don't know their main causes. Okay, but before then, predominantly complex, and then this one. Now, if it is simple, as I said, depending on the type of organ it finds itself. For example, if it is within the liver, simple cyst, so simple hepatic cyst. Okay, now, within the uterus, within the cervix, we have glands that lines the cervical canal. 
Okay, so we have Napoleon glands. Okay, I hope you do remember. So I said when there is obstruction of these glands, there is what? Because there is obstruction, cysts may form within the cells, and then any cyst that forms within the cells is what? Napoleon cyst. We also talk about the vagina. Okay, and then we realize that we have that less that within that part. So if there is also obstruction, that that uh, any blockade that.